You are not the next Stephen King. You are not the next Emma Bull. You are not the next anyone. You are the very first you. Seanan McGuire. You're listening to Writing Roots, brought to you by Aspen House Publishing. Welcome to Writing Roots. I'm Lee Hull. And I'm Lee Esses. And I apologize to McGuire. I absolutely probably butchered their first name. But it's a great quote and we had to use it. Today's question centers around writing trends. The question is, what are the current trends in fiction? And along with that, I want to write a book that sells. Which genres should I aim for? The short answer for this one is whatever genre you want to write in. Whatever you're reading, write in that. It's simple. If you're reading it, someone else is reading it, they will read what you write. If you are getting into writing because you want to make money, I would suggest getting into the stock market or cryptocurrency or anything besides writing. Writing is a work of passion. It is a work of art. If you aren't passionate about what you're writing, the whole effort is futile. So we can talk about trends in book covers. We can talk about trends as far as time of year, genre cycles, but in the end, I would not advise you to write toward any trend. However, this is still our topic today. Question, did you follow trends in high school? I like to think that I didn't, that I was my own person, but even in my effort to not follow trends, I was still following trends. What about you? Basically the same. I didn't put a lot of effort into following trends, but it still came out because Those were the clothes that were available. That's how I did my hair. So even if I didn't want to, we are. And that same thing applies to writing. You will unintentionally follow trends as you write what you want to write, as you write the same kinds of things that you're reading. So long as you're keeping up with reading, you have to read in order to write. And it's not a bad thing to follow trends. I would say don't chase trends, but if your book happens to fall into this suddenly very popular enemies to lovers type plot structure, great. Understand it, market toward it, but when you're writing that first draft, you write for yourself. Somebody's critique said that the Divergent series kind of killed dystopian fiction. It fit every single category, every single trope and want within that category, within that trend, so perfectly that it was boring, that it was predictable and very rote. If you are intentionally following those trends and trying to check all of those boxes, your writing won't be as interesting. It'll end up fairly shallow. People aren't interested because they aren't surprised. They're reading an echo chamber instead of a journey of discovery for you, the author. So there are a lot of misconceptions when it comes to writing trends. As we've said, you have to read in order to write. And one of the misconceptions is that if they read someone else's book, they'll accidentally plagiarize that author or that book. That is absolutely false. You can be inspired by them. You can take elements from that. But unless you're writing word for word what they had, you are still creating your own new story. I don't believe there is a thing called accidentally plagiarize. Another misconception is that if you write in those trends and you fill all those boxes that you think readers want to read, it'll make you money. It simply won't. It is a bigger pond, but there are a lot more big fish in that pond. There's also the misconception on the opposite end of that, that writing against the trends will make you unique. Do you know how many other people out there are writing against the trends to be unique? On the 9th of this month, we covered a whole episode on what it means to be unique and the value of being you versus the attempt to be unique. But I wouldn't worry too much about what the trends say to do. I know that that sounds like contradictory advice. We're saying, don't write with the trends, but do write with the trends. 
It's somewhere in the middle. No, you don't want to pursue to write every single trope in the trend that you're wanting, but you don't want to bucket on purpose. Write intentionally your own work, what you want to read. And the final misconception is that there simply aren't enough readers out there for every genre to thrive. Wrong. Absolutely wrong. We're in such a unique moment in history because everyone has access to everything. No matter how tiny and specific your genre is that you're writing toward, there are audience begging for your book to add to and enrich that particular genre and culture. I might personally not read nonfiction, but look at how big the nonfiction section is at the bookstore. So many people read and get nonfiction. I don't read a lot of contemporary action novels, but Lee does. Lee reads a lot of them. So just because you don't doesn't mean other people won't. There are lots of genres out there And there are lots more people out there who love to read. And you have some readers who will read anything. And that's awesome. So we've told you all of these things. Don't think that you'll accidentally plagiarize people. Don't think that writing trends will make you money. Don't think that going against writing trends will make you money. What do we aim for? First and foremost, write in the genre you read the most. This is awesome automatic proof that there is an audience for that genre because you are that audience. Reading in that genre will help you inherently pick up those different trends, the different styles, the different things that are happening so that you'll use them naturally rather than forced. It's when you force those things that it becomes halting and boring. I would also say aim to just write the story. Tell the story you want to write. Focus on the problem and solution and how writing the story is changing you during your first draft. Don't worry about what genre you fall into until after the first draft is complete. Like my current work in progress, I thought it was going to be a adult fantasy story. The more I write it, the more I start reading, the more I'm realizing it's probably going to end up closer to a young adult fantasy story. And that surprised me, but it'll still work. And ultimately, genre is a marketing tool. If you're traditionally publishing, your publishers and your agents will want to know this. They'll want to know that it's in a genre that there's already a market for, and that's generally the purpose. But other than that, just focus on writing it. If you do want to see what trends are out there, so you can possibly write towards that, though not forcefully, go look at what genres are sought by agents, publishers, and contests. What are they seeking to put out there into the world? That's especially a good thermometer of what will soon become popular because this is what people who are making a living off of are predicting will be popular next. But definitely don't write for that. Write for yourself. You can also keep an eye out what trends are happening within genres. So take young adult and new adult fantasy. Current trends, there are a lot of enemies to lovers. There's a lot of morally great characters. These are the kind of trends that are happening within genres that people are really liking and they want to see again and again. And again, the more specific you can be, the better off you will be. The last thing to keep an eye out for are genre cycles. So there will be things that are growing in popularity. There are things that are at the height of their popularity. There are things that are fading out of popularity. And these will come back later. So about 15 years ago, we had this high wave of vampire werewolf fiction. And it started to die out. And I've actually kind of seen a resurgence that it's becoming a little bit more popular now. So it's going on the up end of its cycle. 
You can also look at superhero movies and those kind of flicks. Those are starting to die out. But all of these waves, these crests and peaks and highs and lows are really about chasing what's already been popular somewhere else. But like our opener said, you can be that trendsetter or you can be a follower. What it comes down to is making sure that you are writing for you. You are your target audience. Before we close out this episode, Happy New Year, by the way, everybody. Next month in January, we are going to be focusing on healthy habits of writing. This is the time of year a lot of people make New Year's resolutions to go out there, do things, be better. We want you to be better at writing. If you found a particular healthy habit in your life that you want to share with the world so that everyone can take advantage of your experience, please share it with us. You can share it on our Facebook page or on Instagram or just send us an email and hopefully we can get a chance to announce it and fit it into next month's collection. Hopefully next season we will help you develop those writing habits that will carry you through the rest of the year so that all year long you can be writing selfishly. If you have a question or comment for our hosts or a topic you'd like us to cover, send us an email at writingroots at aspenhousepublishing.com or find us on Facebook by searching for Aspen House Publishing. 